Fellow Falcoholics, what is up? Welcome to episode 109 of the Falcoholic Live. I am, of course, your host, Kevin Knight, at Falcoholic Kevin on Twitter, joined by an illustrious guest this evening. You know him, Keenan Forney, uh, former Falcons offensive guard for quite a long time, uh, was on the team for some of the Falcons' most productive rushing seasons. And uh, also with us tonight, we have some excellent co hosts. We've got Adnan Ikic at Say Which Way, Eric Robinson at Eric underscore Robinson, and of course, Evan Birchfield at the very easy to remember Evan Birchfield on Twitter. So we got a full house tonight. Uh, we're going to get to some good stuff. And if you guys have questions for Keenan or anyone else, you can throw those in the chat and we will go from there. But to uh, get things kicked off, uh, Keenan, we'll start with you. How are you doing this evening? Doing really good, man. What's up with y'all? Doing good, doing good. Just uh, getting excited. Football. Yeah, getting excited about the potential of any football at all, even if it's arm's length football uh, at training camp. Oh, I'll take man. paper. I'll take paper football right now. Man, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, man, there's I'll... some Madden games on ESPN if you want to watch that. <laughs> oh man, it's gotten that bad, huh? Man, I'm, pop- I'm popping in old VHS uh, game tapes just to stay in tune with it right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's about that time. It's about that time. Uh, yeah, and it's we're hopeful here that uh, you know the the league's COVID protocols will go into effect and everything will work out well here with training camp getting started. Um, and I'm I'm happy we have uh, Keenan here to kind of give us his take on on the whole situation. And I know he's been working uh, closely. Uh, even I, I think it was today working with um, Caleb McGarry and Chris Lindstrom personally. Um, so I'm sure the fans are interested to hear about that. But uh, first of all, I mean, just I know you in your time, you never really had to deal with anything this crazy in terms of like, you know, play potentially being postponed. But, uh, you know, what are your what is your thought on on NFL training camp this year? I mean, do you think this the season is, is going to happen at this point? Um, you know, how do you how do you feel about the whole thing? Uh, I don't think those 32 owners are going to let this football season slide without exhausting every measure. You know, they're going to leave a lot of money out there. So yep. I, I think we're going to have some kind of football. I believe I just saw something today where the Falcons are going to have about 15, 20,000 fans in the stadium, you know, so it'll be some social distancing going on in NB Stadium. So, uh, yeah, they I believe they're going to do everything they can. They're not going to leave that money out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Uh, in fairness, the last uh, few weeks of last season, it looked like the fans were social distancing with around <laughs> 15, 20,000 anyway, so it won't be much of a difference. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, just dropping the hammer. Uh, yeah, well, you know, obviously we're hoping that the, you know people are excited to see the team this year. Uh, I know I am. Uh, I know everyone here is as well. Um, but, yeah, the hope is that, you know, we'll get to this season healthy and, I, I agree with, with Keenan's take that uh, the owners are probably going to do everything possible to make it through or at least get it started. Um, oh, yeah. I think it just, I think it sucks for kids that are lower, that are drafted in the lower rounds or free agents because they've missed all this time to kind of, you know, try to let the teams know who they are. You know, they miss rookie minicamp, OTAs, minicamp, training. I mean, they're going to miss preseason games to really get out there and show you stuff. You know, you get all those opportunities. So now it's like – you got you a couple of weeks in camp, and man, you better go out there hitting anything moving. Um, yeah, 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 but it is and, what it is. And you know that better than anyone. You were a seventh round pick in a, a coming out of the draft, right? So you you know yes, better sir. than anyone how like how important it is to show out in those training camps and preseason to get that opportunity. Yeah, buddy, man, that's where you earn your reps. You know, uh, practice. You earn uh, you earn the right to uh, to play in the game and practice. They're not gonna throw you out there if you can't block nobody. They're nothing to get your quarterback or running back or anybody else killed. You know, so uh, you, you know, man, you know, I, I hate would, it for those kids. You know, you would you would think the NFL and the, the PA will go to some type of measure to at least um, open up the the. Uh, practice squad roster a little bit, extend it a little bit more, ask, right. you know, allow the teams to add more bodies to it with, right. because of this circumstance. Because like you mentioned, you know, those those undrafted free agents, those late round guys, you know, they're pretty much battling for maybe one or two spots on that practice squad. You know, it's, I mean, they're not going to be able to take everybody, of course, but I, I, mm-hmm. I, I see they, they're not going to that extent. 
Uh, I think that they still kind of working some of this stuff out a little bit. I mean, who knows how that stuff will be rewritten up and progress as the season goes, you know. Right. I guess maybe one good thing about it is you're going to have a lot more veterans getting jobs, you know what I mean, not being cut because somebody else is cheaper. So I guess it just depends on how you look. But, you know, I, I do feel sorry for those kids because they worked their whole lives to get to that point and to now have that chance to show what they can do is going to be from – yeah, it's going to be about that small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's, it, you know, obviously you, you made it work um, and obviously had a great career uh, doing that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like like they said, I mean, nobody nobody would know better than you that, you know, would you, have, you know, it, would you have even gotten a, a shot to start, you know, without, without those opportunities? And now we've also heard, you know, that they're going to potentially cut – the roster down to 80, you know, going into camp. And, you know, that just immediately acts as 10 oh, guys wow. before they've even had a chance to really get on the practice field. Cause like you said, there's been no mini camp. There's been nothing. So, um, oh, wow. it's like, there's not even, I mean, it's basically like, okay, we're going to watch your college tape and that's it. Like, you know, we, you don't even get a chance to show up. Oh man, that sucks. So dang, all they getting is the college tape. And then the, the virtual meetings, oh, we don't think that you answered that question fast enough, so yeah, you're done. You know, that's so crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah. Golly, I hate that for them kids, man. Yeah. But, it's you know, rough. It's, it's rough, man. Yeah, it's and rough. I'm hopeful that, you know, maybe we'll see next next season, like, more of a, a, a deeper look at some of the guys that weren't able to make it in the shortened off season. I'm hopeful of that. But, I mean, again, you're going to have a whole new crop of guys coming out next year. Um, hopefully, you know, yep. that have had a chance to play their college season. Um, and it's just, you get lost in the shuffle. And that's unfortunately, you know, uh, just one of the realities of this game. Um, let's, let's hope things can be changed because this is where the XFL can be beneficial for those guys to pick those type of guys up. So mm-hmm. let's, let's hope that they're able to bring those services back and, and be able to, to give these guys a chance to, to showcase themselves. I believe they are because, uh, you know, my college coach, June Jones, he was the uh, coach for, I think, the team in Houston. And yeah. I talked with him a while back, and I think he's pretty optimistic that they're going to get that back going. They need to because it's kind of like a minor league system how yeah. you was kind of alluding to for these kids. You know, it's a chance for you to play some more ball, get you some more tape, sharpen up your technique, show that, hey, I do deserve a shot. You know, I do belong there. I hope they do get it. So the hell, I hope they get another. I hope they get the arena leagues back going for these kids, because just speaking from somebody that, you know, I was a seven round pick. I needed those OTAs and mini camps because I was coming from the run and shoot offense, and then I had to go to Dan Reeves, who's downhill, hit it and get it. So I had to learn a lot of different techniques, you know, run blocking yeah. wise. Where, yeah. as opposed, to I come from a college system where we're throwing the ball 80, 90 percent of the time. So I needed that. And I needed to hear, you know, to, I needed to work through all the calls and work through all the, you know, the different combination blocks you work with guys, you know, from being a guard, you know, you're working it with the center, you're working it with the right tackle, learning footwork, learning, you know, hell, learning the different defenses that you're going to see. Right. I needed that. So I hate it for those kids that might be coming from stuff like that. And they need those different months just to get comfortable because it took me about a month or two to get comfortable so, I mean, by the time we went to training camp, I was ready to go. I was like, okay, I feel, I feel pretty confident. I can just let it fly. But even going to training camp, stuff is constantly changing. You know, coaches are constantly tweaking and adjusting certain plays. They're constantly changing calls to different defenses. You know, hell, you get into preseason games against different teams, the game plan gets tweaked as well. You know, hey, versus this look, we're not going to call it this. We're going to do that. You know, it's a bunch of different little nuances that happen that you need that time. And, you know, it just sucks for those kids. But, man, you know what? Hey, you got your foot in the door. You still got to kick that thing through. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. do what you got to do and, you know, hey, make it be the first priority. You yeah. know, yeah. Cut, cut off. I mean, there's no there's no going out. You got to stay inside. So you might as well study and, you know, at least get mentally as sharp as you can, you know, and uh Go let the chips fall what they may, man. You know, let you let you what's the old saying, man? Let your nuts hang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, you know? that's a great saying, it is. <laughs> and no, I, I think you're absolutely right. And like because everything is so condensed, like I think we're gonna see a really intense training camp where the competition is ratcheted up to a hundred because everybody knows, like, you know, you've got 
like six weeks to, to show it and that's it and there's not gonna and you know it seems like there's not gonna be any preseason games so you have to go out there and prove to your coaches like hey I want this I'm gonna get it and so I, I just I'm, I'm interested to see how, how it goes you know because we always get training camp fights you know the Falcons aren't necessarily a team that has a lot of those but um, I mean every it's just every the stakes are, are so high for these for these guys and they the energy level is going to be high and you know I hope that it, it, it that teams don't overlook these young players just because there is a shortened uh, preseason schedule because we, you know we've seen like like uh, I mean a seventh round pick there's a slight leg up but I mean it's not you know it's not that far removed from an undrafted guy you know we've seen the Falcons you know draft seven rounders yeah yeah <laughs> a priority guy you know and, and um, you know we, we've seen seventh rounders go on and have great careers and we've had seventh rounders you know get get cut before you know the final cuts even so uh, and not in recent memory I think it was a uh, who was the offensive lineman the Falcons took recently? I think it was Jake Jake Rogers. Um, he did get picked up and ended up elsewhere, but you know it's a cutthroat business, and and with such limited amount of time, it's just uh, I feel for these guys who, you know, like exactly like you said, they just have to go out there and and, and show their stuff, and hopefully the coaches recognize that, um, uh, especially for a team like the Falcons, who almost always it seems like have at least one or two undrafted guys make the roster every single year, and they're one of those teams that's really willing to take a chance on guys, so. I'm I'm hopeful we we will still see uh, some guys get opportunities this year, uh, even with the shortened uh, camp schedule. Yeah, man. I'm wondering. Uh, so since the preseason games have been canceled, I'm I'm, I'm assuming that no teams are going to practice with each other. Is that correct? I, yeah, yeah, I doubt it. I doubt yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It's just oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, with that with that time, I feel like they should at least extend training camp another week or so, at least. But you know, they may not even do that. They may just say, all right. You know, you get your two weeks or whatever for training camp, and you jump right into the season. So, Ooh. every team, I don't, it, regardless if it's the Chiefs or if it's the Bengals, every team is going to have to adjust considerably yeah. here. Week you know, one it, is yeah. going to be so sloppy. Yeah, you, it is that going might to be, be so some, sloppy. That might be some bad football played that week. To be quite honest, <laughs> um, even even with you know your starters are out there on the field, but it's just that's that's just how it is, and. This this circumstance is going to test how good a coaching staff actually is. Oh to yeah, be, to be able to adjust on the fly and make things work with new faces in the building, new rookies and in, in considerable roles, new coaches on the staff. This is really going to test how good a staff as a whole really is. Yeah, it's going to test how good those personnel people are too. Because you know, are you bringing in guys that can? Uh, you know that are projects are you bringing in guys that can actually right. come in and try and challenge for a roster spot real right. quick because you ain't got that long to try to develop them you don't have you know yeah. all that april may june july that's out the window yeah yeah and, and and that's honestly and the guys can attest for this that's that's dan quinn's draft method where he would draft those type of raw players mm -hmm. but he avoided that this year um, and and it might it may be good for the best that he, that he that he did avoid that because mm. imagine if he drafted a raw player this year and he had no way of getting game reps and week one is here and he's got to put that raw that raw player out there on the field right it's a do or die season too for Dan Quinn it, it is yeah yep. yeah I think that had something to do with it too he was like yeah I ain't got no time to develop somebody <laughs> right <laughs> this year and next year I gotta get somebody <laughs> ready to. It's helped me keep my job. It he ain't 2015 like, anymore. He took right. nothing but like team captains and guys that played in the national championship and stuff like that. Like, Man. He, he yeah. better get some, you better get some proven winners, guys that's ready to yeah. step in and play yeah. for you. Exactly. Yeah, it was that old school comrade filter that Dimitrov had where always, every year, all-American, four-year starter, team captain, went yeah. right back to that. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. that has worked out for them at times, so, I mean, I, I don't necessarily yeah. blame them, but uh, – and. Keenan, I know like uh, the there's like it seems like there's a lot of opinions on whether like the preseason is something that the players actually think is valuable or enjoy. So I, I was curious as to where you fall on that. Like, do you feel like that's really valuable for to have around, whether it's for veterans to you know get get settled for the season or for new players to make a mark? I mean, what is your kind of take on the whole preseason situation? It's two different ways I kind of look at that. You know, being if you're a young guy, a rookie you need all those games you need all those practices because who knows you might have been struggling for a while and then somewhere along the way that light clicks on for you and now all of a sudden you got you another game 
or another week of practice to really get out there and, you know, get in the minds and the hearts of some of those personnel guys and coaches. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, for the veteran, no. <laughs> we, yeah, we don't want all them games. We want, like, maybe one or two, maybe three at the most, you know. I'll be honest with you, you know, uh, three at the most. You know, the first one to kind of get you acclimated, let the young guys get out there, see what they can do. Second one, you play a little bit more. And then that third one, most of the time, we would play into the second half, maybe first couple series in that third quarter, you know, just so when you get out there week one, your lungs ain't shocked and you out there <laughs> bent over and you can't finish the game, you know. Mm-hmm. That's why I like that. I don't know about anybody else, but I needed that just so I could have the mental, you know, you know, I'll be thinking upstairs, like, okay, yeah, you know, I played three quarters now. Let's just go ahead and, you know, strike it out for this last one, and then I'll be ready to go for yeah. the rest of the season. You need that. You don't want to go out there and play one quarter now, all of a sudden, okay, hey, let's right. go play a full game. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially for offensive linemen, because, like, you don't take, there's no snaps off for the offensive line. This ain't, you know, wide receiver where you might be shuffled out every now and then. It's like, okay, if the offense is on the field, you're playing. So, uh, yeah, buddy. There's just no off reps for the O line. So, uh, right. Even with the D lineman, oh, first, mm-hmm. second down, okay, third down, you might come out. No, nah, we staying out there every doggone play. You yep. know what I mean? I know we're not running. <laughs> 20, 30, 40 yards, but we still hitting up against somebody. High impact. Push High impact every single play. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a, yeah, I, I am interested in that because, like, there is, I think there is value in preseason, but it, it's like, like, like you said, I, I know for some players it's probably like a psychological thing. Like, okay, I want to, like, just have the experience of, like, being back in a game situation so it's not just totally alien to me you know when i step in in week one and for a lot of players it's like a it's a reps thing you know and getting to go against you know uh someone that's not your teammate you know getting to go against different schemes and different things that you may not see every day in practice just to get those reps so um it does seem like you know the preseason is something that's definitely on the table of, of getting axed particularly with the uh with the nfl you know clamoring for more games um but yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as you that it's probably more valuable for the the young players than it is for the veterans, and that's maybe why we have uh, veterans pushing for free, fewer and fewer preseason games. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, buddy, that's exactly why they're doing it. They don't <laughs> want it as much, but the young guys they do want it. They need it, you know. So it's hey, who do you uh, who are you trying to appease? Right. Yeah, and you know this year in particular, there's been a you you know with the the new CBA they did you know, technically add uh, some additional roster spots. It's kind of weird how they've done it, you know, with like over the weekends, you can have additional players and, uh, you know, they've added a few extra practice squad spots. Um, but in turn, you know, this this whole COVID situation has kind of called into question the, the need for additional roster spots, maybe permanently, you know, with the fact that we might have players missing significant time because of uh, COVID-19. So I wanted to get your take on that. You know, do you think that expanding rosters you know, I don't know what, what some number could be, you know, 55, 60. Is that something you would like to see? Uh, if not, is there a particular reason why you think that would be, you know, not beneficial for the NFL? Uh, I would like to see them expand it, yes. You know, just to, uh, one, give some of those uh, younger kids a chance, you know what I mean, to come on through and still stay in there developing past training camp. And also, too, uh, it's a long season and they haven't had that long of a time to try and prepare for it, you know, because as much as players don't like training camp, you need training camp because you got to get yourself into some kind of football shape. You know, you can run around, you know, out and do hills and do sprints on the track and go in the weight room and push some weights, but there's nothing like getting out there having to push and move against somebody in some grass. That's something totally different, you know, and you have to get ready for that. There's no... I mean, there's really no way to to get ready for that, to get into football shape than other by playing football, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Y'all know what yeah, I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you yeah. do need that time with your helmet on, your pads, all that extra gear. We used to call it full metal jacket. You <laughs> want full metal jacket on out there while you're out there doing what you got to do. And you're not even thinking about it. You're not in the weight room with your helmet on and shoulder pads and thigh pads and your cleats doing bench press and nothing like that. That's something totally different. You know, you got, what, maybe 10, 15 pounds worth of equipment that you got to go out on the field with. That's 
it's, it's totally yeah. different. It, yeah. It's such a it's such a physical sport, man. You have to get you know mentally ready to be able. Yeah. To do that type of, you know, that type of physicality. And yeah. people don't appreciate it. Like we don't appreciate enough just what these football players do with all of this weight on. Just like those four two forties that they're like running out on the field with all of this weight on, with the helmet, with the shoulder pads. It's just mm-hmm. like it's just an athletic feat. Yeah. yeah, it's every every position, every position. You know, offensive line, you got to push on another guy. Running backs, they got to run, and other guys are grabbing and jerking at them. Receivers, they got to do their releases while a DB is pushing on them. You know what I mean? Most of the time, those guys, they've been on a track, and they look pretty tight, you know what I'm saying, with their <laughs> shirt off, and, hey, I'm going to do my little wind sprints. It's totally different when somebody's sticking their hands on you. Now you got to – you know, maneuver and push yeah. and do all that other stuff, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, you know, you, you need that, you know? Because usually after the first couple of days of training camp, maybe the first week or so, a lot of guys, everybody's getting some kind of injury, you know? Mm-hmm. They get a little something because it's something that you haven't been training for for a long time. Right. So it's really toughening your body a little bit if you think about it. It's toughening your mind as well, but more so your body. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense because, and even doing conditioning is one thing, like you said, but then going to a, a full contact environment, which is what you finally get in training camp. I mean, there's until you actually do it, there's no way to really prep for that. And, you know, hopefully it's not serious injuries, but it's good to get those kind of soft tissue, minor things out of the way in training camp. So when you get into the season, you know, you're, you're all recovered, you're ready to go, your body's ready for that type of contact every single week. Uh, and that's part of why training camp and OTAs and all that's important because you actually get, you know, that type of situation under your belt before, you know, the games start counting basically. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, we, we always used to have a saying like, uh, on the, uh, the day, like, you know, you check in the training camp the day before and you might have practice the next morning like that after that last meeting that night, everybody had, we used to have a saying like, hey, this is the best that you're going to feel for the rest of the year right now. So enjoy it. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. And, you know, it, I'm sure like you could vouch for it. Like there's so many injuries and things that like we don't hear about. Like everyone is hurting. Everyone's got something going on during the season, mm-hmm. even if it's not on the injury report. And uh, oh yeah, man! That tra- the training room looks like a morgue after about a week or so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they got all the training tables filled up. They're even rolling in train portable training tables for guys. You know, and veterans wow. get the priority of the machines and everything. So you know, it's uh, it's just what it is. You know, mm-hmm. it's that first week, and everybody got bumps and bruises, and you know, you're trying to, you know, deal with them and move through them and. You know, so you can perform the best that you can. It's it's football, baby. Uh, everyone is day to day by the end of the season. <laughs> no, my goodness. Hey, oh, hey, goodness. Hey, it's all, hey, it's all up here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, sorry, Keenan, giving got... you flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Keenan, I got a question for you. You know, you've been you've been working recently with uh, the two young uh, offensive linemen that the Falcons put a lot of they invested a lot in last year, Christian Lindstrom and, and Caleb McGarry. Uh, what? your time with them, the brief time that you've had with them, what did you take away from that time to that lets you know why the team put so much into them? Uh, let me think about that. Well, let me break them both down individually. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, actually, let me tell, let me, let me put both of them together and then I'm going to break them both down. Uh, one thing, as far as both of them are concerned, I've noticed that they're not afraid to work. Mm-hmm. They're not afraid to, you know, to ask questions, you know, because you, sometimes you get a lot of young guys, they feel like they know it all. And right. sometimes with first round picks, you know, they, you first, yeah. Yeah, they come in yeah. with a lot of prestige, a lot more money. Maybe they're not willing to work as hard um, with these two. No, nah, that's out the door, you know, because they don't have to seek me out. They don't have to come get with me, you know, uh, to, 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 to take their game further. They don't have to, but they are, especially Chris Lindstrom. I've been working with him for a while now. You know, Caleb got back into town, and so Chris told him about what we was doing, and Caleb came in yesterday, and he came in today, and, uh, you know, just helping him to try to help. I'm I'm trying to help him to make his job easier, you know, Mm -hmm. because he's already a big, strong dude. Like, he's 
He looks way better than he did last year. I'm talking about Kayla McGarry. Yeah, yeah. When I went up to the facility, we had to do a little function, and I met him and Chris then. Uh, and then I ran into him yesterday. I was just like, God, dog, man, what you weigh now? <laughs> like, I'm talking about he's 330 pounds with some abs. Yeah. Cut. Maybe not bricked up. <laughs> hey, maybe not bricked up, but his, his stuff ain't looking like mine. He's a good looking 330. We'll healthy young that. man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a healthy young man. Big old joker. You know, he might even have a chance at some professional wrestling after his career is done 15 20 years from now you know what i mean because <laughs> he has that look you know what i mean right but let me break them both down so chris lindstrom has been coming for the past maybe month or so and his humility and his his humility to ask questions you know what i mean mm -hmm. he's yeah. not afraid to say hey look here i need some help on this what right. do you suggest you know what I'm saying? And that right mm -hmm. there will just endear you to want to help somebody. You know what I right. mean? Mm -hmm. You can't right. not say no when somebody wants some help to get better. You know what I mean? Yeah. And let's be honest. I'm a dirty bird for life, maybe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm a Falcon fan all that through and through. You know, they took a shot on me, so I've been riding with them since 2001. Yeah, we, we don't we don't recognize your time in Jacksonville. We don't we don't recognize. Hey, you. hey, you know, <laughs> hey, Jacksonville treated me right. They, you know, hey, but you know, I'm a I gotta be straight up with you. You know, I made my name and my home here with the Dirty Birds. Yeah. So when it comes to the right guard for the Dirty Birds. Whatever I got and I can give him, I'm going to give it to him. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? And right. he's humble enough and he's hard working enough. God, dog, I got to tell y'all, man, it seems like he don't never get tired when we're out there working out. <laughs> Sometimes we're out there hour and a half, two hours. Mm -hmm. So that right there shows me he has the work ethic mm -hmm. to do what he needs to do. And so it's funny because yesterday I was working with him, showing him a little step of uh, some footwork as far as like, you know, double teaming a shade or a nose to the linebacker. And it was something that I learned from Tom Cable when I was playing here. Mm -hmm. And I was, I actually got really good at it. So I was like, man, you know what? Let me give him that right there. Cause he asked me, Hey, what do you, how would you block, you know, this look versus, you know, this play or whatever. And that just immediately clicked in my head. Oh, okay. Let me show him the motorcycle kick, right? That's what I call it, the technique. Mm -hmm. So I was showing it to him yesterday and he just kept working and working. And he came back in this morning after hitting, well, actually, let me back up. Yesterday, he uh, hit me up, was like, hey, can we get in a little bit earlier tomorrow? So we got in way early this morning and he came in, he was talking about, man, I was walking around the house doing that doing that little step of my girlfriend. <laughs> my girlfriend was like, man, what the hell are you doing? You know? I said, hey, I was hey, I was getting high. I was like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you're supposed to do it at the house too, to mm -hmm. where it just gets comfortable for you. So, I mean, you know, I know I'm I'm getting long-winded. Oh, no, you're good. Oh, no, you know, no, no, no. no, you're good. We you know, Chris Lindstrom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Chris Lindstrom, you know, he's he, he's humble. And, you know what I'm saying, he's got that work ethic. You know, he's a grinder. I've already picked that up from him. So, you know, I I want nothing but good things from somebody that is willing to work like that and to seek help. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Caleb, he's just going off of what Chris had been telling him. You know, he just got into town. And so Caleb came in. We did a couple things yesterday, and he came in. Actually, he kind of showed up a little late because Chris gave him the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> he told him he was going to do something at 9. Oh, he told him we was going to do something at 10, and they got their wires crossed. So me and – yeah. So I ended up staying – after I worked out Lindstrom, I stayed with McGarry, and we did some things. Mm -hmm. So it was great for me and him to get one-on-one. -on -one. And right. so, you know, I've been around offensive linemen. I've watched it. I I've continually watched it. I know what I'm looking at. I know what I see. And so we did a couple little starter drills so I could see where he was at. And we as we got into it, you know, he started asking a bunch of great questions. I was able to show him, hey, look here, you might want to try it this way. You might want to try it that way, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't want to mess with their technique too much because what they've done has gotten them to this point. Mm -hmm. I just right. want to give them a couple things to make their job easier because, you know, the NFL every week, you go and go against somebody that's the biggest and baddest from wherever, whatever parts of the earth or America that they come from, mm -hmm. you know? And you need you a few tricks. Sometimes you need to change up some things when you go against different guys, you know? One thing I talk with him about is, you know, changing up his sets a little bit, you know? 
Okay. Change up your pass sets just a little bit so that guy isn't keying in on you, you know? And mm -hmm. he told me a couple different little things also he liked to work on. So we're going to come back and get to it. I think he liked what we're doing, you know? So we're going to get back at it hopefully Friday or Saturday. And uh, and that's one thing I like about McGarry, his, uh, his humility to, hey, you know what? I need to work on this. Or also to his work ethic. He's a grinder as well. So I can see why the Falcons drafted those two young studs. Yeah. And I'm happy to help them any way I can. And I'm pulling for them. You know, right side, strong side. You know, I, you know, I, I, I see, I see both of them, and I think of me and Todd Weiner for all those years. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So you yeah. know, yeah, I, I, I want to help those guys be the best they can be, so they can go out there and win, and the Falcons will look good nationally, and we can all talk a little, you know what, to all these other fans, especially the Saints fans, because yeah. y'all, yeah. man, let's not even talk about them. Let's not even, yeah. They're they not, they not, they not welcome. Yeah, 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 we're not even going to get no We're going to save the Saints slander podcast for, we're going to save that for a special occasion. Uh, but yeah. Don't, I know don't, don't call me. <laughs> don't call me for the Saints podcast. That's the slander <laughs> podcast. Yeah, we're going to make sure to, you know, talk. it'll be after we've defeated, we've swi uh, after we've swept them this year, we'll have you on and we'll, you know, uh, give them, you know, the ultimatum of, you know, how the Falcons are the far superior team, and this has proved it. So, oh yeah, uh, I'm just gonna send the middle finger emoji. To <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's that's good with that's good with me. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I appreciate all the insight on those two. You know, for me watching them, they their physicality definitely stood out to me. You know, McGarry's technique to me watching his college tape was kind of unique because he was so ultra aggressive as a pass protector. Like he, you'd see him, you know, I, I watched like a bunch of tackles that year, and it's like. You know, in your pass sets, you're not always like going after guys. You know, a lot of times it's I'm gonna make I'm gonna make the pocket, I'm gonna kick out, and I'm gonna keep this guy from getting to my quarterback. And McGarry was just like, nah, like I'm launching off the ball, I'm gonna go get you so you can't get to my quarterback. And that was and something. The, fun, I, the funny thing, the funny thing about that is McGarry looks like the type of blocker. Just watching him on tape, watch his college film, he looks like the type of blocker that he's going to throw everything at you he looks aggressive he looks physical he looks like he's going to be he, he's going to get in your head he looks like he's going to be a thorn in your side the whole game Lindstrom does it just on the surface he doesn't look like a guy that's going to beat you up but when you put the put the pads on put the helmet on strap it up Lindstrom is giving it to you man that, and that's, oh, yeah. that's, that's the interesting thing about those two and yeah they, they jail so much as well yeah you know uh Chris is uh Chris is uh more of the the, the the technique you know what i'm the, the saying technical, the, te yeah, the yeah. technical guy yeah you yeah. know and that's not to say that caleb isn't but you know caleb is caleb you know and i've i've been around guys a long time so i kind of pick up on their personalities mm -hmm. caleb is the guy that i want to go into the bar with yes and if <laughs> something pop on me yes. and you hey we're gonna get yes. back to back and we're gonna throw these hands yeah. you know what i'm saying <laughs> Like exactly. that's it. That's his type of personality. You know, he's he's a mauler type. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. he wants to play. We, we made that comment last year after he was drafted. We all said that he would be the guy we would take it down an alley with us <laughs> to go for a fight. He definitely. just looks like he's going. He's going to hit you with a brick or something. It's, it's going. It's going to be a hey, brick bottle something. Bottle you know what I mean? Something. Yeah. He, just, you know how you watch those old movies and it's a bar brawl or whatever starting in like in a. You know, it's a brawl starting in the bar, and you just see glass and all that yep. stuff. Caleb going starting on. it. Caleb started the brawl. Yes, he started. Yes. <laughs> I know. I know, you know I know. He said not to mention the Saints, but what Eric was just describing about Caleb being the thorn in your side. I mean, Cam Jordan knows all about that from last last year in that game in New Orleans, when the oh, Gary absolutely man. shut him down. Oh, and, or, and I remember Cam Jordan was off Twitter for like three weeks after that. Oh, <laughs> He just went radio silent after that one. Yeah, mm. got showed up yeah. by a rookie. You know, can't. Yeah, uh, nothing to say Fal about that. Falcon's Twitter, Falcon's Twitter did not, you know, allow him to forget about that too. He <laughs> to was, this day, he was stoned. He was stoned by a well, rookie. Right remember, back. he mocked them when they when they got he drafted did. on Twitter. He did. He yeah. did. He uh, I wasn't on Twitter then, so man. <laughs> oh, I you was, missed uh, it. Yeah. He missed called it. Him, he yeah. called him. He called him fresh meat. And they yeah. were drafted. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I think he yeah. called both of them fresh meat. Yeah, he did. He called yeah. them fresh meat. And yeah. the first meeting McGarry had, Jordan didn't have, I don't think he had a pressure. Didn't Definitely have a didn't, hit. Have, didn't have a quarterback hit. He was stoned. Mm, oh, man. See, okay. Good. Hey, well, I'm, well, I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? He took that. 
He took that little bit of noise that <laughs> Buddy was talking. I want to say it another way, but you know we might have some youngsters on here. <laughs> I'm glad he took that little bit of noise he was talking and went up there and put his foot in his behind. Good. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I didn't know all that was going on on Twitter. I'm glad I'm on Twitter now, so yeah. I'll, I'll be abreast yeah. of this stuff going forward. Oh yeah. Man. Uh, there's no place like Falcons Twitter. There's no <laughs> place like Falcons. It's an exciting Twitter. Falcons Twitter, huh? Okay. Yeah, it's an exciting yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. There we go. <laughs> real, real, real quick, I'm, I'm interested in knowing this as well, man. How do you feel about the team as a whole this year? I mean, they, they made some additions. They bought in Gurley. They bought in Dante Fowler. You know, you know. hopefully they can get uh, Keanu back healthy. So yes. just curious, what you know, as, as a former Falcon, how do you feel about this team this year on, on, on the field? Do you think they can actually make that postseason run that we, we believe they can? Uh, I'm hoping so, just because, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan still. Right. Uh Two on paper, yeah, it looks like we can do it. You know what I mean? Look at our old line. Got like what four first rounders. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them's a Hall of Famer, potentially Alex Mack. Mm-hmm. Uh, a running back. Hopefully, you know he comes in and he's healthy and he can he's ready to go because you know Todd Gurley has uh, did his thing in the league. Yeah. I hope he's right. still got some tread on them tires. You know, right. uh, Matt Ryan. Uh, I love Matt Ryan. I, Hated when I hear other Falcons fans talking about get rid of Matty Ice. I'm like, who are you gonna get rid of him for? A Hall of Famer. How you get rid of a Hall of Famer, man? How you get rid of a Hall of Famer? In his prime. In his prime, he was just the MVP a couple years ago. Did y'all forget about that? Yeah, they yeah. did. Well, you know, they, yeah, they, they, the they just need yeah. to go draft Patrick Mahomes. That's how you know. If you, if it's all, if you do that, you know, that's fine. Yeah, but yeah, good luck doing that. You know, one one of thirty two teams managed to draft Patrick Mahomes in the past, you know, ten years. So uh, good luck, good right. luck replicating that. Right. <laughs> we've been we've been solid with Matt since two thousand nine when he came in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he's just gotten better, and he's represented our team well. And you know, I, I love Matt. You know, Matt's still humble. I'll still see Matt on the golf course. Well, I saw him at one of his golf outings a while back, and he's still as humble as can be. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can tell, though, yeah. he's got a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He ain't that but same when, wicked when no you, more, yeah. When you win league MVP, you know, you got you to gotta stick the chest out a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to flex a little bit. So I like that. You know, I like my quarterback like that. I don't know about yeah. nobody else. I like my quarterback walking with his head. Yeah. Chest out, you know, looking people in the eye right, when you right, first walk right. up on them. I like that. That's just right. me. Uh, let's get to the, the rest of the offense. You know, uh, Julio, Calvin. Come on now. I wish we could have signed and kept Hoop. That would have made it better. But you know, hey, stuff happens, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, business. It's a business, the the day. man. Yeah. But ooh, boy, that, that, think about that offense if Hoop was still there. We oh, can't yeah. talk about it because he's gone. Uh, mm. Let's get to the defense. Uh, Grady Jarrett, fifth round pick. He's an All Pro now. Monster. And, and I believe things are going to get better for him. I enjoy and I love watching him play. Oh, my gosh. I enjoy watching Grady Jarrett play. Uh, who else we got up front? Tack McKinley. I hope that Tack can get him some more pass rush moves so he can be way more effective, you know, because he he first thing I, I take off Tack is he's tough. You know what I'm saying? He's oh, had absolutely. some shoulder injuries the past few years. And he still comes out and he comes and he battles, you know. Yeah. I just pray yeah. and I hope that he can get him some more pass rush moves to make him more and a more effective rusher. Uh, the linebackers, I hate we lost Devondre. We still got Debo in the middle. Uh, the back end, got Ricardo. I hope Keanu comes back healthy because he, man, that dog will bite back there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Miss that back there, man. Yeah. Miss that. Man, come on now. <laughs> and our cornerbacks, I hope Isaiah and. Who's our other corner? Because they let uh, Trufon go. Who's going to be the other starter? It's um, Terrell. Yeah, Terrell. Oh, the AJ first Terrell round pick. Oh, AJ. That's right. That's right. Our first rounder, you know? Come on, now. We we got some talent. Yeah. yeah. We just got to put it together. But, you know, hey, if everybody, you know what I'm saying, could hand in the piece of paper of their depth charge, everybody would be in the damn <laughs> uh, postseason going all the way. Right. Unfortunately, right. it don't work like that. And I, you know, man, that's it. I don't know. We, we got talent, man, and I can't wait to see what they do. You know, hey, keep praying for Keanu, man. I want oh, Keanu yeah. to get out there and do his thing, man. He's one of my yeah. favorite players to watch out there. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting because, like, when Keanu's on the field, like, the defense is just completely different. Like, it's, like, a completely different unit. That's the, that's the effect that he has on them. I, I think it's, you know, it's psychological, and it's obviously his on-field play, too. But, 
um, just as soon as he leaves the field, man, it's like they, they lose something. And unfortunately, that's happened, you know, each of the last two years, you know, 2000, 2018 in particular, when they just got rocked by injuries. That was just a really, really tough season uh, in that regard. But, uh, you know, it's he's been one of the most, like, reliable rehabbing players I've ever seen. Like, just he seems like he hits his rehab so hard and so consistently. Like, I don't have any, you know, reservations about his – up like his work ethic and how, how hard he's working to get back. Um, I just hope, you know, his body and, and the powers, the football gods are, are generous to him and allow him to get back out there. Cause I, I agree mm-hmm. with you, man. He's just, he's such a fun player to watch and he's, he's been just such a key to that defense. Um, yeah, but I need, I need all the Falcon fans, Falcon nation. I need everybody. You know what I mean? Before you go to sleep at night, when you say your prayers, say a prayer for Keanu. I mean, I'm being serious, you know, because, you know, I, I don't want to be preaching or nothing like that to you guys. But, you know, you know, God says when two or more and, you know, are gathered, you know, he hears those prayers. So, I mean, everybody, you know, when you're praying for the world and you're praying for, you know, the social injustice, pray for Keanu, yeah. you know, so God can touch him. So, you know, this young man who is a great young man, by the way. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Oh, I met yeah. him a few times. He's a great young man. Yeah, you talk about a, humble. You talk about humility. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Very humble, very, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's not a prick, not a jerk, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. a lot of guys, they, they can they can be that way. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. They, on that, they on that pedestal. They can be that way. Yeah. Keanu's not. You know, I just pray that this young man can, you know, can come on back and, you know, Hell, these setbacks are used as, you know, uh, as a story of motivation mm-hmm. right. for pros, kids, anybody alike. You know, right. I, I just pray, man, I pray to God and I want everybody else to say a little prayer that God will touch that young man so his story can be used to help others going forward. Right. And also so he can get back on the field for the Dirty Birds and do his thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. And um, everything we've heard so far is pretty positive. Like, it sounds like he's back to full health. It's just... Like you said, we need to see him on the field, you yeah. know, get the real game it, it, action. It's just as yeah. mental as it is physical, especially after you come back, after you make that yeah. journey back, and then it happens yeah. again, and then you it's have been, to come back again. Especially with that Achilles. particular injury, too, because yeah, it was the ACL, ACL one year, and then yeah. now it's the Achilles, and everybody knows what's attached to an Achilles injury, how mm-hmm. it takes everything from you. It doesn't matter. Honestly, it doesn't even really matter what sport you play. An Achilles injury has, you know, a, a lot of players are weary about that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It's tough. Aspect. He's got to get over that. I just pray that he knows that, you know, Achilles injuries and surgeries are light years mm-hmm. ahead of where they right. were back in the day. You yep. know, back in the day, you know, my, my father-in-law was here and he played basketball and he was – talking about an Achilles injury back in the day man you get one of those and that's, that's it sense. for you mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. sense to your career yeah that's it you know especially if you're an explosive athlete you know mm-hmm. what I mean he's a skilled guy you know but nowadays man guys are coming back from Achilles a year later even better with no problems yeah. so yeah. you know uh, shout out to the medical profession you know uh, to the doctors that worked on him you know uh, you know, uh, I just pray it's not going to be a, a huge setback to him, you know? Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, and as a guy that was like, like, Keanu was never all about just, like, you know, explosive athleticism either. Like, his was always a combination of just, like, he just played super hard. I mean, he was athletic enough, certainly, for the NFL, but it was his, just his attitude, it just in his instincts. Like, he just always finds a way to be around the ball and his physicality. So, you know, I feel like even if he loses a little, like, even if he happens to lose a step, which... You know, he's still really young, so I I think that's probably unlikely to happen. But I think he can still be successful in the NFL just because it's it wasn't all about the athleticism for him. It was a combination of a lot of a lot of factors that made him such a good player. So uh, I think I think he's he's got a long career ahead of him still. And we're going to be hopeful uh, that he can get back to full strength uh, as soon as possible. Uh, Right. I love Hey, me personally. I love a safety back there that will come and knock your block off. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah, him, him being on the field has has helped the Falcons a lot in games, just having him out there. Mm-hmm. You can go back to that Eagles game last year um, where on that fourth down play, Wentz went to Ertz, and uh, Ertz wanted to stretch for the first down, but he saw out of the corner of his eye, he saw Keanu coming. So hmm. He had to tuck it back in, and because he tucked it back in, he didn't get the first, he didn't get the first down, and they won mm-hmm. the game because of that. Mm-hmm. So having Keanu out there 
you know, just his presence alone, having that headhunter out there, man, it, it, it changes teams' philosophy when it comes mm-hmm. to Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but hey, it makes that defense feel like, hey, we got all our bullets mm-hmm. today. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Like, I'll give you an example. Like, whenever, like, when we used to play, like, some of those real tough defenses, like, uh, like Tampa Bay back in the day, yeah. or even the Ravens, yep. you know, uh, there were a couple times where we played the Ravens early in my career and Ray Lewis was hurt and they were still good but there was a time after that matter of fact we played them another year and Ray had, was out there and every time he was out there with that defense it just seemed like they could talk a little bit more they had a different swagger about them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. mm-hmm. like guys that wasn't talking that wasn't running their mouth the year before <laughs> now all of a sudden they <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You talking at it. You talking you didn't talk last time. Right, right. You got something to say today. Okay, okay, it's because Ray's out here. All right, I got it. You know? So, you know, just having your guy out there, you know, that's just like when we would have, you know, number seven back there in the huddle with us. You just felt like, man, we got all our bullets in the chamber today. We can yeah. do it. Uh, yeah. And speaking of which, I, I was meaning to ask, What's so you're someone that's a uh, block for pocket passers before? What's the difference between blocking for a Michael Vick and for the traditional pocket passer? Uh, Mike isn't gonna sit back there too long, <laughs> <laughs> he's not gonna be back there and just uh, well, like just, just mentally. Do you approach Do you approach it differently? Like, do no. you pre- approach each play differently? No, not at all. Like, I get that question a lot, matter of fact. You know, people are wondering, like, man, how do you block for somebody that's constantly moving around like that? Well, I like that because every so often, you're not going to be completely perfect and block somebody one-on-one by yourself. You're going to need that quarterback to move around and get you out of trouble or, mm-hmm. you know, step up and mm-hmm. or spin, you know, backpedal and spin out yeah, and yeah. run, you know. Yeah. And so that's what Mike – afforded us a lot, you know, because there was some times I'd whiff out there and might get me out of trouble. He'd come back to the huddle, <laughs> look at me, I'm like, hey, my, bad, <laughs> my, my bad, man, my bad. Yeah, yeah, he always called me King B. He's like, King B, come on, bro. I was like, man, that's my fault, dog. I got <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing, like, like people, you know, think of NFL players as like robots, you know, when they don't actually get a chance to talk to them. And it's it's not like that at all. Like the quarterback like knows when you mess up, you know, and you just sometimes you, you know, you play it off and sometimes you just go and it, it's just it's great, you know, the banter and all that. It, it's great to hear. Um, oh yeah, they know what's going on out there. They know where that, <laughs> you know what I mean, where that sign swipe came yeah. from. You know, Matt's never gonna go to a press conference and be like, "Oh yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> Chris Lister, you missed that block. You really screwed me." You know, <laughs> He's, Matt would never say that, but he might say that in the huddle. You know, <laughs> hey, they, they let you know if they get rocked a couple times. You know what I'm saying? They helmet twisted sideways. They'll just look at you. They got a lot of things going on, so they might not be able to address you right then. But yeah, they gonna get you. You know, it was always a lot of times you know if i messed up i come in at halftime i just be like hey mike man my bad dog i'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get that for you you know what i'm saying like, all right i got you man you know what i mean yeah how many times you came back to the huddle and didn't make eye contact with me <laughs> well, that's happened before <laughs> it's happened you know what i'm saying like hey <laughs> it's the National Football League. You gonna you gonna get beat. Yeah. Yep, yep, Somebody yeah. you know the guy. A lot of times the guy that you're playing against probably getting paid way more than you. So his job is to kick your behind. You know. Yep, so right. yeah, it's, it's you know, and I'm fortunate. You know that I kicked a lot more ass than I took the ass kicking. You know. Right. But hey, every once in a while it happens. It does. And, and this was a question from the chat uh, asking who was the most difficult uh, D lineman you've ever gone up against. Man, I got a list of them. Uh, first off, let's say Brian Young, who was the D-line coach for the Falcons a couple Ooh. years ago. He was a tough sucker. He was big and strong and quick and way more experienced. He just checked all the boxes. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, a uh, quick story about him. There was one time, my first game playing against him, you know, you come out of college, you think you're pretty strong, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty strong. Feeling good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, going out there against him, that let me know, okay, yeah, you're going to have to hit this weight room real hard in the off season because one time he kind of folded me backwards and, like, my feet are on the ground. If you can picture this, my feet are on the ground, he's folding me back. And I'm thinking he's going to just cockroach me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And as I'm falling back, he grabs me. 
stops me from falling back, lifts me up with one arm, and sets me up and winks at me. And I was like, God dang. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he's he's got so much time that he's just able to like rescue you from falling over and continue with what he's doing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Pick, hey, pick me up with one arm and set me back up is what I'm telling you. Right. I was yeah. on the on the ground on my knees and he picked me up and set me back up <laughs> and Oof. winked at me and <laughs> ran and chased the ball. Won't happen again next time. Uh, yeah, that was man. the courtesy. That was you know the welcome. Yeah, so. <laughs> Welcome to the NFL. So, so it, the list Welcome to the NFL, good. exactly. That's exactly what that was. Welcome to the league, young fella. You ain't as strong as you thought you was. But it was him. You know, I had him. There was Brian Young. You know, Chris Hovind of the Vikings and the, and the Buccaneers was a dog. Uh, Chris Jenkins of Carolina was a dog. Uh, who else? Who else? Uh, Tim Bowens for the Dolphins. It's a, I got a list of them. I can... Mm find the list and run them off to you. Uh, <laughs> Leroy Glover for the Cowboys and the Saints. Whew. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, Ooh. I was just talking with Chris Lindstrom today, working with him as far as a technique I came up with to block him so hopefully he can use it with somebody else. Yeah. You know? Because there's a lot of times you go against some of those dogs like that and you're just like, okay, you know, this, you know, what coach is telling me isn't working. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a boxing match. You know, those boxers, they get into the ring and they might start off about 80%. And then they're like, okay, yeah, let me change this up because my game plan that I came in this game with isn't working. Mm-hmm. You right. know, and yeah, so yeah, you got to yeah. come up with some things. And so, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a show Lynch from that, you know, my little boxer method or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's valuable stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and, buddy. And, it's, and that's the thing, too, that I think a lot of fans who understand it's like, you know, you can have the best plan in the world going in and then something else happens and then you have to adjust and being what are able, you going to do? Right. Like being able to adjust. And that's, that's something I think you get better. That's something you just learn with experience, you know, and uh, it's tough for rookies. You know, people talk about the rookie wall and stuff like that. And it's just like, there's only so much you can absorb in a season. Even if you're, even if you're starting all the games, which is, you know, that's not something that always happens for rookies. And um, so it's just, it's, it's a lot to absorb and uh, you know, McGarry came in I thought you know considering everything that happened with him you know having to miss most of training camp with his heart condition thankfully that ended up you know being something he was able to get taken care of and he was back for the season Mm, Um, I forgot about that that's right yeah so he had to basically come in without any training camp reps um and you know I I thought you know he he put it together He, he did did a good job um you know Lindstrom just had to miss basically the whole season and you know you feel for the guy it's just just one of those things and you know he comes back late in the season and just comes in and gets his reps and I thought he you know played really well considering so it's just it it, it never goes the way you think it's gonna go in the NFL you know it's uh, a lot of battling it's a lot of you know a hey, test your metal see where you're at you know mm-hmm. like you was talking about Chris just then you know that first game uh, we were just talking about Brian Young that first game you know, uh, maybe the second uh, end of the first quarter, I got a turf toe injury. Like, I felt my toe slip out of socket and go back in on a field goal. Ooh. And, yeah, and I had to go. I went in at halftime and, you know, got a little got a little feel good to it, you know. <laughs> yep, yep. And, I had, and as I'm sitting there, you know, the trainer's like, hey, how do you feel? You feel like you can go back or should I tell Dan and them? And I had to make my mind up, okay, am I going to go back out there and fight this joker or am I going to sit in here and quit? You know, my teammates are looking at me. That guy's looking at me. You know, it tests your metal. Like, where are you yeah. at? Mm-hmm. Do you, you said you want to do this. Do you really want to do this? Mm-hmm. And so I went out there and I fought him for the rest of the game. Couldn't feel my toe at all. Mm-hmm. You, you'd be surprised how much you miss your toes. <laughs> <laughs> right. You, don't, you, hurt, you never right? realize it until you need it, you know. Yeah, you don't realize it until you need it. So... Like, I went out there, fought him, you know, did okay. I gave up two sacks, you know, but, hey, it is what it is. He's a Hall of Famer, or it will be. And after that, my foot was black and blue, and I was out for some weeks after that. Mm -hmm. And even when I came back, my foot was not still feeling the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was still jacked up. My foot didn't feel better until about March. Right. (laughs) We talking about it's October. My foot didn't feel better until March. So it was just one of them things where I had to fight through it and, you know, uh, I'm not going to let nobody punk me out out here, pretty much. You know, I'm yeah. going to fight. I'm going to show I belong. I'm going to show my teammates. First off, that's who you really trying to, you know, you want to respect. You, you got to get yeah, your teammates yeah. to respect you. Hey, I want my teammates to respect me. 
and I want, you know, the rest of this league to respect me. So you're going to have to fight through some stuff. It's not going to be, you know, picture perfect, no clouds, you know, sunny out there every time to suit up. You're going to go in there with some stuff. So it's like, man, hey, what you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. And like turf toe is one of those injuries that I feel like casual fans hear turf toe and they're like, oh, okay, that doesn't sound so bad. Turf toe sucks. Like that inj- that it's that's an injury that's like a hundred times worse than it sounds oh like it is. And it takes, it takes so long to get, to get over. Uh, yeah. So, I had, I had them two years in a row. So oh, man. 2001, I had it on my left foot and in 2002, uh-huh. I had it on the right foot. I got that one in training camp wrestling around with Travis Hall oh, man. And, uh, yeah. and one-on-ones. So yeah, it was, it's tough. Matter of fact, my toes don't bend and look quite the same as they used to because of that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I think it was, I think, uh, it might have been 2017 when Julio pretty much dealt with turf toe like the entire season. Ooh, it was one of those years, yeah. Season. And as a receiver. Yeah. yeah. They, yeah, on, the ball, they on the ball of their foot a lot, having yeah. to cut and get out of breaks. Yeah. Yeah. And he still had an incredible year, but he was never 100% that whole, that whole season mm-hmm. because of that. Yeah. Hey, now check this out, you guys. When you get turf toe, the trainers, when they wrap your toe up, it's pretty much it's looking like a mummy. Yeah. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all see my remote? Mm-hmm. That's about how thick the tape was around my toe, mm-hmm. around my foot. You know what I mean? I had to get like a whole extra shoe because <laughs> <laughs> my shoe, shoe wasn't fitting in the sixteen no more. I had to bump it up to that seventeen, and then I still had to cut a little slice on the side. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The people don't people don't think about that. Like, not only do you got to get wrapped up, but like then then your shoe don't fit no more, so you gotta go get another shoe. But yeah, you know, buddy. luckily NFL teams aren't hurting for shoes, uh, so you know I'm sure they have about 50 different pairs to choose from. But yeah, they got a nice little supply in the <laughs> yeah, back room there. Yeah, somebody somebody you know has got something for you. But uh, oh yeah. Yeah. But it's just the fact you know you got to get that thing mummified, wrapped, yep, and then get out there and you know, and do all the things that you need to do to survive and so you can look good out there. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right, let's see. We did. We had one other question um, from Joachim von Gratz. Uh, so he was asking what uh, if you've had any experience or what you think of uh, another offensive lineman, Matt Gono, a former undrafted free agent. Um, you know what? Honestly, I haven't had a chance to check him out. I'll have to check him out and uh, get back to you. I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Yeah, he was uh, – I think it was last training camp um, after, you know, what we talked about, McGarry's heart condition. Um, Gono got elevated into the starting lineup briefly and then unfortunately had his own injury before the season started. He was actually slated to be the starting right tackle uh, before his injury. Um, looked pretty promising in preseason. Yeah, he was um, a monster in preseason. Yeah. I think he, he was the highest graded PFF player in preseason, but then he had a back injury. Really? And, uh, yeah. A back injury leading into week one, and then we never heard from him again. Ah oh, man, them back injuries. They can yeah. uh, they can wipe you out, man. What yeah. school is 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 he, is he from? I have to look it up. He, I know he was an undrafted guy. I'll pull it up right now. Um, He's been a uh, Gono's been oh, a, a practice squad warrior for the Falcons for the past. Oh, uh, Wesley College. I would say what three years, three four years, okay. something like that. Yeah. Okay. He's been a guy. He's the the Falcons have hung on to him for a while because they saw something in him early on and and for like i said for the fact that he's been on that practice squad he's been on and off for the past few years and for him to get he you know in training camp last year he got you know first second team reps at Mm -hmm. times Mm -hmm. even in person too um they 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 still think highly of him but okay just he's he's a guy that's just stuck around man yeah Uh, under the guy that just found a way to still be on the roster still find a way to make the roster that's what you got to do. Just keep scrapping, man, and yeah. keep sticking around. Yeah, Good for him, I'm gonna have to keep a, I'm gonna have to keep a, keep better tabs on him. <laughs> no, it's cool. Yeah, it seems like the idea is that he's gonna be the swing tackle because uh, they didn't bring Tyson Brelo back. So. Um, it's basically him and why is that man? Ty Sombrello went yeah. well, too I think, bad. I, did, I can't Catch remember if they and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> big man touchdown. Gono. Yeah, part of it was because of Gono, because yeah, of his. Yeah. Uh, okay. Also, the salary cap implications. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's business too. stuff yeah. too. But yeah, so I mean, they, wow, they were they were tied up against the cap this offseason, that's for sure. But um, yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. I know they have like a couple other veteran guys like Justin McRae and John Wetzel, who also have some experience at tackle. So we'll see how that whole thing shakes up. Um, well, and and also, um, you know, you start with Lindstrom. Now you got McGarry. 
you might have the whole Falcons offensive line showing up at your door. <laughs> yeah, be careful Come what on. you wish for. Come on in. We got room. Yeah. We got room and I got time. Yeah. Well, speaking of other offensive line uh, battles, it seems like there's going to be another battle for the other guard position, left guard, with uh, Jamon Brown and uh, James Carpenter. Do you have any thoughts on, on who might come out ahead in, in that particular uh, position battle? Uh, I, my only thoughts is I wish that one of them would walk up to that left guard position and get their hand and put their throat around it and say, hey, this is mine. And just take Come it. Come on with me. Yeah. And just yeah. take it. Come you know, on with me. Will, let's go. That will benefit the, the offense very much. Yes. yes. <laughs> they, they need that. They need that. Yes. Right. Um, I think they said Hennessy's also supposed to compete. That's with true. Them. Yeah, yeah, the rookie. Although they yeah. won't be preseason reps, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, he's he's right. They need they need some guy to say, okay, this is my position. Enough, mm-hmm. of, enough of enough of the battles, enough of the practices. This is mine. I'm not letting it go. Right. Enough of this foolishness. Give it here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hey, did did Hennessy play a little bit of guard in college? I'm not sure if he played in college. I believe he did in high school. A little. Yeah. Yeah, a tiny bit. He spent most of his time at center. Um, But he's big enough to play guard. On tape, yeah, he's shown some versatility um, with with a lot of his blocking sets that maybe they can kind of groom him a little bit to be kind of sort of like an emergency left guard guy. Okay. But his future is he's Alex Mack's heir apparent. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, but if if Hennessy's playing left guard, then that's not great news. I, I just put, <laughs> yeah. put it that way. Uh, yeah, it means they you're down to the last one, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, also you got all this hey, money. Unless tied up he against just comes it. in and shows right. that short area quickness and strength that you got to have to play in that. Middle. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. yeah, but th- you know? there's just so much money invested in the other two guys that it's yeah. like you know yeah. it's it's going to leave them in kind of a in a hole. Of, yeah. So, I mean, I'd be happy. Like, if, if Hennessy comes in as, like, a pro bowler, you know, wins that job, hey, I'm not not going to get any complaints from me. You know, we'll deal with the salary cap issues later. But, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that shakes out because one thing with Dan Quinn that we know is that, I mean, they're going to give guys a chance to compete for every spot. Like, it's, it's you know, other than Alex Mack and Jake Matthews on that offensive line, I mean, uh, there's, you know, probably – and if we're being honest, you know, Lindstrom and – very safe, but <laughs> you know that they gotta, preach competition. We got some talent on the old line, yeah. Man. God, Lee, we got some talent. I can't wait to see what them boys do this year, man. I yeah. just, oh, I can't wait, you know, because that's been, you know, something that everybody's been kind of talking about and kind of stuck out like a sore thumb for a couple years, you yeah. know. Miss you, know? Last year. yeah. Last year in like yeah. 2018, yeah. when they lost both Levitre and, and Brandon Fusco in uh, like the first. <laughs> <laughs> couple weeks of the season and uh that was just a rough year I, I as well re- i can't recall a season where we saw matt just get rocked <laughs> yeah I, it, what was it, that what was that the uh, the thanksgiving game man he got, <laughs> he got he got beat up a little bit he got uh, beat up in both yeah. well it was it was man. the rams game the rams game was, oh, the rams that was game. Yeah. i was at that one that yeah, was, so was, was uh, it was every, brutal. Every he, single drop back, he was going to hit the floor. I felt, I felt so bad for him because it wasn't even, it wasn't even one lineman. Like he was just getting swarmed. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, it was there's Aaron Donald. It was Dante where Fowler. He's, like, trying to throw it, and there's like five Rams. Yeah. Right up <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got about five right yeah. ears up his yeah, ass. Yeah. He got five, <laughs> little, five little. Yeah. That's when like you go back to the huddle and like no one is making eye contact with Matt Ryan. <laughs> it's all oh, five God. guys he's looking like, away. No, you know? know what? And Matt wanted to go back to the huddle and start cussing people out. You know what? I yeah, I get it. You got to take it. it. Sometimes it's justified. I get yeah. it. I get it. I'm not even remembering, but didn't he? Didn't he get banged up after that? And then yeah, he, that's when he Shaw was knocked out of that game. He was oh, knocked yeah. out of that game. He was knocked out of that yeah. game, and that's where his Ironman streak broke the next yep. week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah and then we had the Matt Schaub greatest of all time game. Uh, hey, Matt Schaub had like 420 yards. <laughs> he had an absurd <laughs> game, dude. Matt Schaub hey, with the Matt, veteran savvy. Matt Schaub has always been good oh, for yeah. us about coming in when the starter's out and just playing damn lights out. I don't yeah. know if y'all remember, but back in the early 2000s, Mike Vick got hurt. And yeah. Matt Schaub came in and almost beat the New England Patriots. Patriots he yeah. won. Yeah. yeah. Should have won that game, but yeah. Tom Brady was just Tom Brady and yeah. Yeah. had that last drive and won it for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, he's – it's been it's been really interesting to follow you know Shop's career arc as as a guy that was like in Atlanta 
then not in Atlanta, and now back in Atlanta, you know, to, to I kind mean, of close statistically, the he's like the best quarterback in Texans history. Obviously, Watson will pass him, but like if you just look at stats, and now he's back, it seems like he's been playing forever. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does. That man's like, almost 40 years old now. <laughs> 15, yeah. How long is it? 15 years? Yeah, he's had a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I think he led wow. the entire league in yards one year. Yeah, he did. He had that one year under Kyle Shanahan, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah, with uh, Andre Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kyle Shanahan. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God bless him. God bless you, man. God bless you. Hey, then, quick, quick little trivia for you guys. I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I know this is off the subject, but I was just thinking, man, how many possible Hall of Famers do we have on our offense? You know what I mean? Three. And three. Thank you. What other offense in the league has as much or more? Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, well, that's tough. It, yeah. Poss- maybe the Chiefs. Depend, I mean, but everyone is so young, uh, though, so it's yeah, just hard I mean, to it's like, like. Yeah, we're like Kelsey man, and I got hold away. I got, yeah, you I got, got Kelsey and Holmes. Yeah, think about this because I mean, yeah, that's that's tough. I, I mean, I'm I talking about like if the season, if the world stopped today, who you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, wow. of course we could, I'm, of course we could say Patrick Mahomes, but Patrick Mahomes still young. Yeah, you He's know. Still young. He's I still mean, young. like the Bucks, I, mean, I guess you could say because yeah. like like Tom Brady and Gronk are probably both Hall of Famers, but yeah, you know, I'm not sure that Evans who's, or yeah, Godwin's done third? enough yet. Who's the third? You know, they they haven't who's done the enough one? yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, offensive mm-hmm. line, there's nobody that I could think of. Running back, no. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say maybe even for, you know, if Gurley has a career resurgence and is healthy, you know, he could be a guy that maybe has a Hall of Fame case later. But again, right? it's still too early to really make a determination there. Um, what a, Man, I was going to say Pittsburgh, but no. Yeah. Yeah, Pittsburgh, I don't know. Big that, Ben. Big play. Ben, but I can't, I mean. Who else? Right. Maybe pound, maybe Pouncey, the center, but yeah, yeah, maybe he's, yeah. Still, he's he's still got a little bit more to add, stack on that resume. Yeah. Wow. That's you know, good, I've never even thought about. That's like, a good question. Yeah. That is a good question. The, the Cowboys have that beast offensive line, but um, yeah, you yeah. Yeah. They still, they, they, those linemen they still got some resumes to stack. You know, yeah, they're, they're you, good. They're great. Like Frederick probably would have made the Hall of Fame, but his career unfortunately yeah. kind of ended early. Um, yeah, Zach Martin's on his way. Zach Martin. Zach probably. is on his way. Yeah. The Colts when they had, the you way, know, yeah. before Luck retired, and they had, you know, uh, Quentin Nelson looks like he could be a Hall of Famer potentially. Well, still, but again, still so really good. early. Yeah. yeah. Um, Quentin Nelson is one of my favorite guards. So oh yeah. Much, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Did you guys There's see a... that video of him dunking the other day? <laughs> no, I'm just that one. It, it it's impressive. It's crazy. Man, I, I can't. ran into, hey, check this out, y'all. I ran into him. You know, a friend of mine, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Kevin Schaefer used to play for the Falcons. He owns yeah. a bar in Gainesville called uh, Chop Lock, right? And he had a few of us out, you know, just to eat and kick it or whatever, you know, when everything was lifted. And uh, Quint Nelson was there for a wedding for Coach Van Gorder's son. I don't know if y'all remember Brian Van yeah, Gorder. Yeah, yeah. He was in so you know Quentin Nelson was there, and it's you know it's one thing when you see guys on TV you're like oh man that's a big joker right? When you see Quentin Nelson, I was just like you gotta be kidding me! This <laughs> is going like three hundred and twenty pounds or thirty pounds, and he is just lean and looks like a damn Hulk. You know Bruce Banner after his shirt done ripped. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And like you know, I had to catch myself. I was like, man, you know, I was like, man, I know who I am. I was like, man, yo, I'm, I'm a fan of this guy. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> hey, look, it's it's not often that guards go top ten in the draft. Right. Okay. Right. That man went top ten for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think if you disregarded all the positions, he's a he's a top five football player. Yeah. Top yeah. five football player in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I, I know quarterbacks are more valuable, but disregard the value, disregard uh positions, he's top five. Yeah. 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 And you know, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I I elevate the guards and the centers a little bit higher because to me, they're the goons of the offense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you need you a soldier, you need you a goon up front that's going, you know, Talk shit and and kick shit. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. I'm sorry for cursing. Oh no, it's not. Yeah. It's allowed. It's allowed. That describes, that describes yeah. Quentin Nelson to the T right there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you need you a guy up front that them that the that, that, that the defense's front seven is a little bit worried about. 
yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you need you one of those guys. It's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you ain't afraid of you know the defensive tackle, the pass rusher. You're afraid of the offensive line. You know. <laughs> so, yeah, you afraid yeah. of what this what this crazy joker will do to you? You know, you know what I'm saying? If, if teams went into games against the Colts, game planning for Quentin Nelson, I will completely understand. Oh yeah, like that. That's how good he is. That he's a guard that you have to kind of sort of game plan for. Like you have to really dedicate film sessions for. Like this guy is this good, man. Like he's he's a rare specimen. And, and it was also yeah, like uh last year, I think leading into that divisional round playoff game in twenty eighteen in Kansas City. I yeah. think it was snowing. Yeah. It was like ten degrees and yeah. you just see Quentin Nelson just like an undershirt. Just like undershirt and shorts. <laughs> was it, didn't they, I believe out there like game. a thug. Looking like a thug. You know, that's what, that, that's what he is. In that game the Colts <laughs> The Colts ran the ball for maybe like what, fifteen plays in a row, fourteen, fifteen plays in a row, in that atmosphere and that invite because of you know because of their offensive line they ran behind Nelson so it was just like I said man it's rare to see a guard go top ten and he went top ten for a reason. Oh yeah man you need you need you need your guards to be thugs you know what I mean because uh, <laughs> you know you look at the Larry Allen's of the past you know you get you somebody Ooh. that's just a bull and they're aggressive up there man trust you me that. That defense, they know who he is. Yeah, you know, yeah, make, like there were, there were, make, there were times like Larry Allen. Oh like. yeah, oh yeah. There were times I remember where I knew I was doing my job because one of the DBs on our team would come up and tell me that the DBs from the other team, because they might know each other, is talking about, hey man, yo, sixty-five kind of aggressive, ain't? I'm like, okay, yeah. If I got the DBs <laughs> looking at me, yeah. yeah, I know what them boys up front is thinking too. Yeah, I yeah. don't even run no routes. Sixty-five pulling, he pulling, right? You know what I mean? Getting yeah, out of the way. The thug up front. Yeah. It's a business it. decision by that, you know, cornerback. I'm not taking that pull. I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Oh man, they they running that sweet. I'm a flop. That I'm, yeah, side. I think but I imagine oh. imagine mentally, coach just lines you up against someone like Quentin Nelson. You just know, like, I'm probably not getting past this dude, <laughs> like the entire game. He's just not letting you through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, and that's where I want Lindstrom to get to, so yeah. he can be that thug up front, that goon up front for our offensive line. You know, mm-hmm. where the other teams are watching and they're like, "Man, God, dog, here come Lindstrom. Yep, yep. Here he comes. <laughs> I'm hoping. Here come yeah. McGarry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like well, they well, look well. at that. They look at that, and they are watching that all week. You know, they they might not say nothing about it, but they're weary. They're leery of that. Oh, yeah. And when you got that, if you're thinking about that, then you're not thinking about getting the mat or running after the ball carrier or, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. doing your job. You're worried right. about, man, what's this dude up here going to do to me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, get to that point where where they're like, oh, if we're getting any sacks, it's not coming through the right side. Not this game. Not this game. <laughs> they yeah. get to where they start rotating guys in and out on you to see, hey, let's see. <laughs> let's see who's going to have some luck today. You right. Know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, quick, quick, quick story. I remember there was a time we went to go play Seattle, and uh, this is when Walter Jones was the left tackle. And Walter Jones, Hall of Famer, you know he's that dude. I remember hearing a story that our D lineman they <laughs> they kept just putting guys out there on him just to see who would have some success. And I remember Babino telling uh, Chauncey or somebody, he's like, "Hey, man." Come over here. I can't do nothing with him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way you want it as an offensive lineman. Yeah, they're going to keep rotating guys on you, and nobody's going to have no success, and they finally just get to where they just quit. Their will is broken. Mm-hmm. Their will is broke before you step out there on the field. Now you just got to go prove it to them, you know, because you can't gauge strength by watching film too much. You know, mm-hmm. now they feeling it's like, okay, it's going to be one of them type of days. Right, right, and he and he's That's a little why. he's a little stupid up here too. You know, he's afraid. <laughs> he ain't afraid to take it that extra limb. You know, take it that extra step. You yeah. know, you, you gotta you I gotta do that the, with those guys. The offensive line and probably cornerbacks would be the most difficult positions, just because you could be playing lights out the whole game, but if you screw up once on like mm. a big play or something. That's all they talk about, and that's all right. they remember. Like yeah, but, pressure. You give up one yeah, sack, you, you get burned once, you know, for a long touchdown. Yeah. It's like that's – everyone's going to talk about that for a week. It doesn't matter if you yep. – yep. you know, it was 10, 10, you know, targets in coverage and you gave up one or, you know, I mean, yep. you, you, you have like – 
30, 40 pass protection reps, you know, a game, you give up one sack, everyone's everyone's mad at you. And it's like, well, what about the other 39? <laughs> or I didn't right. give up a yeah. sack. Oh, you know? <laughs> oh, that guy, he had a great game. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It's like, dog, I've been sending him out all game, and we got behind, and we had to throw it, and he gets all these opportunities <laughs> to get back there to the guy, or right, whatever yeah. the scenario is. Third and 15. But, you know, hey, you know. third and 15, now we're in two-minute offense, and six minutes left in the game, they know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? We're down all these points. They know what we're about to do. I'm in a two point stance. <laughs> right. <They know>, run. <laughs> but that's you play offensive line. That's what it is. That's what you sign up for. Yep. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Keenan, this has been great. Uh, we've loved having you on. Um, and if you're if you're willing, we'd love to have you back on sometime. We've gone like super late, but uh, I'm sure no one's minded. I certainly haven't. Um, Man, I've had a great time. Hell's yeah, we got to do this again if yeah, y'all I, have. I, me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I warned him that it or flies me. by. Oh, it does. Yeah, it really, and it's like you did say that, Elvin. You did. Hey, what yeah. time is it right now? God, <laughs> it's it's it is at nine forty. Yeah, and this is. I mean, it, we just yeah, we have we have fun on the show, um, and you've been a great addition. So yeah, we'll we'll get you back on. When it, whenever you're, the, whenever you want, to come on and talk some Falcons. You know, especially we, since we def- there's literally we definitely need to, to bring them back for a Saints game this year. Doesn't oh, matter yeah. which one, we'll bring them back. Oh, it's oh, especially man. after games <laughs> when we when we talk about like post games and stuff. Yeah, we do post games. Uh, yeah. and you know, I'm with that. I'm yeah, with that. Let's do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a good time, and you know, but we have you know we have we have people that you know are, are loyalists that come here in the in the off season, but those post game shows, you know, we get. Three five hundred folks in the chat. It gets rowdy in here. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, especially if the, if the Falcons lose. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they just they just come here to watch us squirm if the Falcons yeah, lose. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's, that's when we get our that's when we get our best ratings for some. Yeah. Reason. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always the best ratings after a loss, but. You know, uh, he's, we're, we're gluttons for punishment. You know, we're Falcons fans, so uh, we appreciate you coming on, uh, Keenan. Anything, anything you're working on? I know your your Twitter is at k forty sixty five uh, for guys uh, looking to follow Keenan on Twitter. Anything that you're working on, you want to let uh, the fans know about? Uh, yeah, you know, I finally got on, the, uh, got in the Instagram world, so it's f six five performance at Instagram, and of course, you just said k forty sixty five on Twitter. Uh, all the fans, you know, follow me. You know, I'm constantly, uh, I'm, I'm learning how to do the, the social media thing. You know, my kids, uh, they, they learn to me real quick. Uh, I'll be posting videos. Matter of fact, I just posted some tonight of Chris and Lindstrom in the lab. Not Chris, but Chris Lindstrom and Kayla McGarry in the lab this morning working on some stuff. And, you know, I got a lot of great content. And if you are offensive lineman and you want to get some on the job experience, holler at your boy. You know, I know it's a lot of trainers out there. They're going to show you what they heard writing on the dry erase board or what this coach taught them. But I'm going to teach you what works in the actual real game. I'm teaching you real ball. So holler at your boy, K465 on Twitter, F65. Uh, performance on Instagram and uh, you know if you just want to tune in to just see what the content is that's all good too man oh rise up Falcons absolutely yeah Yeah, you guys definitely need to check that out Um, this man knows his offensive line go watch any Falcons game from like 2001 all the way to like 2007 and this this man is just making defenses pay so uh, I guarantee you he knows what he's talking about Uh, give him a follow on Twitter uh, also with us tonight, guys, we have Evan Birchfield at Evan Birchfield on Twitter. Evan, anything you're working on you want to plug? Uh, nothing specific. I do want to plug. Um, I had an interview with uh, Mr. Forney about uh, maybe a week and a half ago. Great um, article, by the way, like Evan. Pool. Thank you. Oh, no, I mean, it was all like I was telling the guys before the show, like, you're a super because I told them, I, I let them know, like, I let you know. I was like, he's going to fit right in because he's super yeah. down to earth. Like, you don't, you're not full of yourself and stuff like that. Um, but, like, when, when we did that article, I was expecting maybe 20 minutes at the most. We ended up talking for like an hour and a half just because, <laughs> that, you know, you're, you're, you're great to have on here because you, you have all these stories and stuff. So I know, um, like everyone, we appreciate you being on here. But if, if you're down to read it, uh, you can find it on thefalcoholic.com. Um, he's got a lot of stories and we didn't even get to touch on it, but, uh, you know, Mr. Forney being a part of that historic, um, Falcons team that went into Lambeau and won, uh, for, you know, in Lambeau field for the first time ever. So, uh, some good memories, you know, if you've been a Falcons fan for a while, or you just want to, uh, touch up on some 
history if you're a new Falcons fan. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, we'll have to make sure we ask him about that next time because I can't believe I forgot about that. That's some great, some great. I'm sure there's some great stories to go with that. Uh, we'll make sure to get to that one next time. With us uh, also tonight, Eric Robinson. You know him at Eric underscore Robinson on Twitter. Eric, anything you're working on you want to plug? Uh, right now, I'm working on my new series of what if columns. Pretty much, I'm looking back at you know Falcons history and saying what if certain things happen. So. The first one that I'm working on is what if the Falcons did not allow Deion Sanders to hit free agency? What if they brought him back? What would have happened? Ooh. What would a team look like? So I got that one in there. Uh, of course, the over-under series that I focused on this year, over-under on Ty Gurley touchdowns that he may score, over-under on Kevin Ridley touchdowns he may score, over-under on the offense and defensive ranks. Give those a look on the Falcon site. Absolutely, guys. Some good content there. Uh, also with us tonight, Adnan Ikic at Say Which Way on Twitter. Uh, shout out to Adnan. You know, Adnan and I, in case you guys missed it, we went head to head in uh, the the trivia contest uh, on on Falc fans. Uh, so if you guys haven't listened to that show yet, that was a good fun one uh, with some good trivia. I'm not gonna gloat in front of Adnan. I'm not I'm not gonna spoil it or anything. But it was, it was good. So check that out on the Locked On Falcons podcast as well. Adnan, anything you're working on? You want to plug? Um. Uh, I finished up my series of the five most important players going into 2020. I'll start one up on the five mo- uh, most important defensive players coming up as well. I also did an over-under uh, article on the offensive line, actually, looking at over-under how many sacks uh, they'll allow uh, this season, possibly, so check that out. Um, and, yes, Kevin is very humble. He's not going to gloat, but he did. Uh, he did get the better of me. In the uh, in the finals of that trivia contest in 2016, I I did not brush up all my undrafted free agents, so I took the L on that one. <laughs> yeah, that so, was uh, that was the killer question. Yeah, the undrafted so, uh, free agent. Big congrats to uh, to Kevin. I'll, I'll always remember that um, Josh Perkins was the only other undrafted free agent other than Brian Poole to start in that 2016 season. Yep, it's burned into our memories now. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have gotten that question, so it just was luck of the draw. But, uh, yeah, that was that was fun. Check that out, guys. Um, also, guys, uh, if you don't mind throwing the channel, uh, throwing the video a like, that'll help other p- folks on YouTube find it. Uh, we always appreciate that. And then if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, too. You'll get notifications when we go live. Uh, and otherwise, guys, I'm Kevin Knight, at Alcoholic Kevin on Twitter. Uh, I've been doing my player profiles, uh, so I've been going through the projected starters uh so I finished defense last week. We're on offense now in wide receiver. And then this weekend we'll start doing some offensive linemen, guys, uh, which is relevant to this show. So check that out as well. But uh, otherwise, guys, uh, we appreciate everyone for tuning in in the depths of the off season. Hopefully we'll have some training camp to talk about here soon, some actual football news to go, to go with. Uh, we'll just keep our fingers crossed for the season and all the players staying healthy. And uh, we'll see you guys again uh, two weeks uh hopefully by then we'll have some some news to talk about uh and once again thanks to to keenan for coming on it was a lot of fun uh, and we'll be sure to get him back on here uh oh yeah that was great so once again thanks guys we will talk to you again soon have a great